remember if you watched the uh, the 50 Cent Drink Champs interview, 50 Cent said, yeah, you know, when he hung out with Diddy this one time, he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to take you shopping. You're take me shopping? What, like, I'm a bad bitch or something? Like, yeah. what <laughs> yeah. the hell? And then I don't know if you heard my story where Diddy tried to buy my jacket off me. For real? Uh, you never heard about this? Oh, shit. He was trying to get you on clothes. Yo, I was at a yo, club. Yo, he was about to pay per item to get you yo, naked? Yo, yo, listen. No. We were at a club. I was at a club. Yo, that's like a disgusting form of naked twister. I'm going to just buy your clothes off you. <laughs> like, listen, this is crazy. <laughs> I was at a club. Yo. I've told the story a few times. I said on Drink Champs the first time. I was at a club, and uh, my man Rikers, he he uh, basically was doing celebrity The man outfits. name is Rikers? That was his nickname. Oh, I was about to say, God damn. This is his nickname. <laughs> everyone, everyone knows who he is. Okay. Right? okay this okay. this is a name that everyone's familiar with. And uh, there was a company called Stall and Dean. They did mm -hmm. these really dope throwbacks. And he gave me this jacket with a matching beanie. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling fresh and everything else like that. I go to the club. And I'm hanging out. Diddy just happens to be in the club. So this dude walks up to me, and he was like, yo, I work for Diddy. I said, okay, cool. He's like, yeah, man, uh, Diddy really likes that jacket. He wants to buy it off you. And I'm like, no, man, I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to take off my jacket and sell it to a man. Damn. You sure? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. He's like, all right, man, well, I just want you to know, he wants you to know that you the flyest dude in here. I said, all right, all right cool. And the next day, I remember, I remember I told Rikers the story, and the next day they, they contacted Rikers, and they got one of the jackets from him. My thing was, it was just sort of weird. It was like, why don't you just ask me where I got it? I'll tell you. He was looking in shape. Then he probably was looking at you like Meek Mill in the pool. <laughs> Yo, you doing it, daddy. <laughs> Yo, you scrambling and scraping. <laughs> I just you thought it was it. weird, man. I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird to, to tell him. Like, I wouldn't want to wear, I don't wear used clothes. Like, it was it was like, why would I buy Yo, someone's clothes off them? All like, that being said, though, Vlad, that's not even illegal, man. No, it's perfectly illegal. That's not illegal. illegal. And this no, is, this it's is where. Illegal. It's just a little weird. No, no, of course. This is where we're, we're, we're just at th this place of, you know, you know, the disturbing elements are, yo, everybody knows this is what like Mark Curry and a few others say, yo, everybody know you go in a Diddy party, one one bottle is gonna be the unspiked liquor. Yeah, the I, don't, other, I, don't, like, I don't believe that. And you know something? I talked to my man Sean Prez, who does a lot of interviews for me, and he was there. You know, essentially near the beginning of Bad Boy, he said, "All oh, this is bullshit." You know, and he basically said Mark Curry, you know, he didn't make it as an artist. So he's going to go and make up a whole bunch of shit. A lot of this stuff, I feel, is so sensationalized. Like, for example, when Columbus Short, remember he did that whole story about, yeah, yeah and Diddy called me up at 2 a.m. And he said, yeah, you know, I want to come over, talk, you know, uh, come over. I want to talk to you about some business. He's like, oh, who else is over there? Oh, just me. That's the movie call hours, though, Vlad. Man, listen. <laughs> Vlad, come on. If Diddy called me at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. and said, yo, I want to talk some business with you, I would absolutely go. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. What's he gonna do? Rape me? He's gonna hold me down and, and, and fuck me in the ass? Like, what, what's he gonna do? Yeah, all right, until, uh, until what's he gonna do? Until you drink some of that sparkling water? Well, I probably your ass gonna be sparkling drink, the whole I, night. I, I wouldn't drink the water. I would just. What do you there. think? You're, you're parched. You gonna have it? You gonna have the? <laughs> I'll bring a my nigga own like water. Diddy, a nigga I'll bring like, my own nigga water. like Diddy look like he gonna have the? You gonna have the, with me. the spot a hundred and two? You like damn? It's nah, hot bro, up here. You got some water? Yeah. Okay, so you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? I'm not going over a nigga's house in no two a.m. Well, hotel room. Oh, that's even worse. What What are they gonna do to you, bro? What What can't? Why do I need to come up? Why can't we talk on the phone? Okay, so so you got a great idea. Let's talk. You, you mean to tell me that? Listen, we all deal with people who are geniuses in their own way. Yeah, you know, entrepreneurs, geniuses, millionaires, billionaires. We, you and I both know people yeah. like this. You know, they function on their own schedule. When they're inspired in the middle of the night or on the weekend or whatever else, it's like, yo, okay, I got this idea. Yo, come over. I want something. To, you know, I want to discuss this with you. You could say no. No, call me on Monday. By Monday, they've already gone to someone else. Yeah, but it's no, not. It's not, to me. It's not a big deal. No, no. Contextually, I think I. It's ain't not doing a it. big deal. You're saying Jay Z called you at two a.m. to yo, listen, I got this idea. This I don't want to either. I ain't going over there. Okay, well, I would. Hell no. Nah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't Shit. have a problem with that. In fact, I mean, look at for no, example. No, 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 no. If he tell me his family is at the crib, all right, listen, cool. listen, like, a private like, hotel. I've talked man, to people. Think I'm a I've thot. talked to people that had know that knew Kobe. Very well. And they said that Kobe would pull this type of shit with his teammates. He would call them at 3 a.m. and say, hey, go to the gym. I want to practice with you. And the ones that would no, say no, no, no. We're going to the gym. The ones that say, that say if no. If he said come in the he'd, sauna. He'd get, them off the, he'd get them off the fucking team. And the ones that say yes, he'd be like, okay, this dude is serious. He had Yo, the same kind of passion that Vlad, I do. You ever seen that meme when they say when you show up to the Diddy party and you're like, where the hoes at? But you're the hoe. <laughs> you ever see that one? I haven't seen Tell that you. one. but Yeah, you, you, know. show, you show up to Diddy's room. And you're like, damn, dude, I thought you said, yeah, some bitches over here. They'd be like, yeah, Playboy, that's you. Yeah. And I would turn around and walk out. It's all right. 
it, 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 it don't, well, according to all these people, if we're going by their word, it don't, it, all these guys look like they weren't really trying to disagree to all the butt sexing in. If, if I came over to Diddy's room at 2 a.m., and he's got his bathrobe open. Yeah, he's like, yo, hey, yo, yo. he's sitting on the edge of the bed, yeah, and he just opened his leg he like opens that. Opens his legs. You could see a, like, you could, you could right. see a ball sack dropping, I, I and he's say, just, looking, he's staring at you, Vlad. Right. Yo, like, yo, yo, Vlad TV gonna be the biggest playboy. So I'm licking say, his lips. I'm good. I've already had meetings with revolt that went nowhere. I say I'm good. No thanks. I walk out. Okay, but that's what I'm trying to say. And if to someone tried to jump me and assault me, no. that would press charges. Yo, yo, Vlad, and I would sue. Vlad, you're being so dense. You gotta imagine. You go to some of these people's places, and that's what's really detailed in these lawsuits. It's such a phenomenal but so extravagant place. It's, it's not like even if you're on guard, there's 50 different ways to take down your inhibition. Like it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna make you unguarded a little bit. Hey, all right, what's up? He might really you talk. You can't unguard me to have gay sex with you. Yo, it if, will not happen. If, if he's, I, I have never been that unguarded in my life. Yo. Yeah, this is and a, I've done ecstasy and yo, you know acid and mushrooms yo, and a lot of weed and liquor. I've never been that unguarded. Yo, he spiked, it will not happen with me. Yo, it's the reason why 50 used to call it the Diddy Juice. Like, yo, he spiked, he spiked your Chirac or your little De Leon. You know what I mean? Right. I wouldn't drink anything. He got you off. He got I you off like a I would be obviously guarded 90? coming over there, but I wouldn't drink anything. And I don't think that. Yeah, yeah, hold on. What was that? That, and I also wouldn't on. think that Diddy would want to have sex with me. I'm sure there's much more what? younger and attractive men that he Yo, could have Yo, you sex walk in the room, Vlad, and the first thing you say to you would be like, remember I told you you was looking fly in that brown jacket. <laughs> I got one jacket in the closet right now. You put that you on. You might be wearing the jacket when I came Yo, in. <laughs> you want to try this on? <laughs> oh, he give you the jacket. His shirt is off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he flexing I'm his I'm pecs. Good. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. And you know, like, for example, like, there's interviews by Exhibit. And the reason why Dr. Dre was fucking with Exhibit for so long, you know, you got to understand that Exhibit at one point was a not a very well-known West Coast artist. He was down with alcoholics. He had like paparazzi, which was a nominal hit. But at one point, Dre started fucking with him. And that totally transformed his career. He said the reason why that happened is that whenever Dre would call him, middle of the night, weekend, he's with his kids, he's with his girl, he's asleep. Yo, come to the studio. Boom. He drops whatever he was doing. He would go over there. And that's how the relationship with Dre formed. And he became a multimillionaire because of that. Because Dre is Dre, and Diddy's Diddy. You can't deny no, no, no. the again, talent if, level. Uh, again, maybe if I didn't hear all these things, you'd be like, okay, maybe this person just want to talk some business. Yeah. But now you got to go in there with like, yo, you go in there and this nigga's swinging a butt plug or some shit. Come on, man. Hey, if I saw the butt plug, I would turn around and leave. Yo, this is what I got to say. You know, the, the famous Dave Chappelle skit, you know, when they say, yo, it's 9-11, and he said, I'm watching the news, and they said, man, all of a sudden they say, yo, we got Ja Rule on the phone. And he says... Who the fuck gives a fuck about what Ja Rule thinks at a right. time it like this? a stand-up this? special, yeah. Well, in reality, now we care about Ja Rule. And where is Ja Rule, matter of fact? <laughs> Gene Deal, the, the bodyguard, he was talking about, he was describing these freak calls on time. I've interviewed about. Gene Deal. Some of the stuff he says is true. A lot of the stuff doesn't match up. Okay, but still. He said, he said like, I remember he did this whole thing about, about Biggie, and like he was saying how like Biggie was so upset over Tupac's death that that's how he got into an accident. And I remember when we interviewed Lil C's, he said, no, the timeline of that is all wrong. I got into an accident. I was driving. It was way later. It, 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 the, the two events have nothing to do with each other. Well, regardless. Gene Deal. Listen, I like Gene Deal. I've mm. interviewed him before. But a he lot of it. stuff he says is just not true. Oh, shit. It's simply not true. The only reason I interviewed him was because he was there the night Biggie got killed. That was the main story I wanted. Well, and I got it. Well, he speaks and a lot of other And that part was relatively stories. accurate. And one of the stories he said, man, you know, he was watching the door while Diddy was in there doing a free call for God knows who. There's, there's some woman that went in there, and he said somebody tried to come. I think he said it was Little Caesar, somebody, I don't know. So, no, no, it was somebody who was the mans of the other person trying to come in, and he said, yo, I got instructions. I can't let nobody up in here, right? And he said almost they got into altercation and said when that happened, he says, I guess the people in the room, they came out to see what was going on. He said Diddy came out in the robe, and Ja Rule came out in the robe. All we want to know is, where is Ja? Ja, this is the time for you to say what the fuck was going on in there. That's what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? I got Ja's number. I'll call him up. I'll no, no, him. yeah, you should clarify that story yeah, because, I'll ask because this is what the audience like us is thinking. We're thinking this is giant freak-offs, and because of the silence of everyone, we're thinking that all y'all niggas was with the freaky-deaky butt plug, all that type of stuff, which uh, it probably wasn't true, but like, 
everybody should come and clarify. Be like, yeah, hell no, I had no goddamn freak off with Diddy or, or, or I don't know what they would say. But everybody been a lot quiet. Like, where these people been at? Yeah, man, listen, I don't know. Man, man. Usher went to I, Bali. I like, yo, Usher went from the Super Bowl and started doing, like, you know what I mean, sent Indian style in Bali with, uh, what's the name? Why don't these people be like, yo, when I heard that Usher and Diddy was wrestling over the Frosted Flakes, I always thought it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> you ever wrestle over the Frosted Flakes, <laughs> Vlad? We need some clarification. I'm speechless right now about the Frosted Flakes. <laughs> Yo, the Frosted Flakes? I mean, there are videos saying that Usher lived with Diddy. Yeah, imagine what them niggas was doing over the Cheerios. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. <laughs>